you are an ass and you will always be an ass and you will end the course of your life as an ass and as far as I can tell, your life will reach its final day before you accept and realize that you are an animal. Miguel de Cervantes, Don Quixote de la Mancha. Hello and welcome back. Now we have a conflict between Sancho's and Don Quixote's points of view. I don't see Sancho but three peasant women atop three donkeys. Sancho plays a consciously deceptive role here, describing what he sees according to the dictates of chivalric fantasy. God save me now from the devil. Is it possible that three Arabians, or whatever you call them, white as the driven snow, look like donkeys to your grace? God help us, and may my beard be plucked out if that's true. Weird, no? Sancho just bet his beard that he knows the truth. Don Quixote insists on reality that their asses or she asses is as true as I am Don Quixote and you Sancho Panza. But wait, Don Quixote and Sancho are fictional characters. Sancho addresses Dulcinea, queen and princess and duchess of beauty, may your highness and mightiness be served by receiving with your good graces and dispositions this your captive knight. Don Quixote is forced to follow Sancho's lead, but he is visibly confused. By now, Don Quixote had kneeled down next to Sancho, and with shocked eyes and disturbed vision, he gazed at the woman whom Sancho was addressing as queen and lady. The narrator tells us Dulcinea is ugly, a peasant girl, and not a particularly attractive one because she was round-faced and snub-nosed. Moreover, she gets angry. Get out of the way, damn it, and let us pass, for we're in a hurry. Depressed, Don Quixote explains to Dulcinea what has happened. The evil enchanter who persecuteth me hath placed clouds and cataracts over my eyes, such that for them alone and not for others, he hath mutated and transformed thy unequaled beauty and appearance into those of a lowly peasant. But he insists he still loves her and begs her to understand, ceaseth not to gaze upon me kindly and lovingly, taking note in this submission and in this kneeling that I perform before your deformed beauty, the humility with which my soul adoreth thee. Dulcinea attempts to escape, but the pain she inflicts on her ass becomes a problem. Since the Jenny felt the spike of the prod, which irritated her more than usual, she started to buck, such that she threw the Lady Dulcinea to the ground. Don Quixote wants to help Dulcinea back on her mount, but she refuses, for she can ride an ass as well as any man. Taking a few steps back, she made a short run and, Placing her hands on the donkey's hindquarters, she threw herself as agile as a hawk right onto the saddle, landing astride it as if she were a man. Sancho is amazed and lets fly with a curious exclamation. By Saint Roque, the lady our mistress is as swift as a falcon. She could teach the most skilled cordoban or Mexican how to ride. By the way, Roque is the patron saint of dogs and of those who are falsely accused. Sancho also observes that Dulcinea's mount is rather savage. She makes her Arabian run like a zebra. Did you know zebras are not indigenous to Spain, but rather Africa? In this scene, Don Quixote anticipates the classic 19th century romantic lover disillusioned by his loss. Meanwhile, Sancho gives a long speech about what he has just witnessed. It's as if he wants to see how far he can push his master. He ends with an hilarious portrait of Dulcinea. To tell the truth, I never saw her ugliness, but rather only her beauty, which was cast all the greater by a mole that she had above her right lip, like a mustache, with seven or eight blonde hairs that hung like threads of gold and longer than a span. With which type of writers does Sancho compare Dulcinea? A. Mexicans and Cordovans B. Texans and Venezuelans C. Cowboys and Indians Correct answer A. Mexicans and Cordovans
Don Quixote's response is also hilarious. At first, he is taken by Sancho's story. He even claims that Dulcinea must have another mole on her inner thigh, but then he hesitates over the detail of the hairs. Those hairs you have mentioned are rather long for a mole. Nevertheless, he believes. I believe it, my friend, for nature has placed nothing on Dulcinea that is not perfect and well-fashioned. Again, here we have Don Quixote the Romantic. I'm the most unfortunate man alive. Our heroes depart El Toboso forever. They remounted their animals and followed the road to Zaragoza. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.